Some ideas in mathematics are so important and so pervasive that they become characters in professional discussions. Literally, as in letters. These characters each have their own stories, and in Chalkboard Bold, I'm looking to share those stories with everyone. They are big, but non-obvious ideas. Things like infinity and symmetry, imaginary numbers and higher dimensional algebra. They're fascinating and technical, but I'm hopeful that I'll be able to relate these stories to everybody. I'm starting at the beginning with numbers. So here's a quick preview of the next few episodes. We start with N, the natural numbers. These are the things that you use to just count. One, two, three, four, etc. Everyday ideas that are arguably ancient ones are built into the very foundation of modern mathematics. What came out of this construction, infinity, and what it means, continues to have far-reaching, if not alarming, consequences to this day. From the natural numbers, we generalize to the integers by including negative numbers. With the negative sign, the integers allow us to define that familiar idea of subtraction, and this frees us up to go forwards and backwards on the number line. But with the advent of that humble, if irritating, minus sign, mathematics can begin to make formal and precise aesthetic notions of things like symmetry. By considering pairs of integers, we get q, or the rational numbers. The rationals are the numbers that we deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. Fractions, decimals, prices, you name it. They are practical numbers. Just as the integers gave us the idea of subtraction, so too do the rationals give us the idea of division. And perhaps the most disturbing thing about the rational numbers comes from their relationship to the natural numbers. From the trees that is Q, we find the forest that is R. Despite the dominant practicality of the rational numbers, the reals are arguably the most invoked, most famous number system uh, of them all. The reals, of course, include the rationals, but also the so-called irrational numbers, which represent all those numbers with infinite decimal representations. These include exceptional examples like pi and e, but also more mundane things like the square root of 2. The irrationals are numbers that cannot be written as a ratio of whole numbers. They have an infinite decimal representation that never repeats. You can never fully see them, you can never fully memorize them, and you can never fully know them. And on face value, that kind of makes sense, because if you're asking for an infinite non-repeating set of numbers that goes out to form a decimal representation, it's a lot easier to make a lot more infinite ones than it is finite ones. But it's a little sobering to realize that the numbers you know, the numbers that you work with from day to day, are like little boats on a giant ocean of numbers that you'll never see and never use. By the time we finish with the reels, I hope to convince you that all numbers are really just abstract ideas, kind of tools of the mind, abstract concepts that are so pervasive, we don't even realize it. By looking inward and seeing numbers for what they really are, cognitive structures, we can better understand ourselves and our minds, and maybe even improve our learning and our teaching. So next time, we'll take a fresh look at what it really means to count things and we'll catch our first glimpse of the demon that lurks at the far end of the number line.